The town was abuzz with the whirring of cars and the ceaseless hustling and bustling of busy body so obsessed with their routines. They would unknowingly let life pass them by and miss out on the simple things. Several people chatted loudly as they crossed the streets on their way to work, suffocating black smoke from many a car's exhaust pipes permeated the air and polluted the sky with clouds of smog. Rats scavenged for food and left trails of wet, goopy trash along the walking paths. The unsanitary conditions would lead to the spread of several pestilences leading to the town's hospitals becoming clogged. A clap of thunder eviscerated the sound barrier accompanied by the steady drizzle of rain. I watched the town fade from view as I rode the public bus. As any who was familiar with this form of transportation could attest to, the bus was congested to the brim with several passengers, all with varying characteristics and hygiene. Due to the tight, cramped build in the bus's structure, many passengers were sandwiched together, some packed together like a can of sardines, and they certainly smell like it too. Greasy, slimy sweat roll down the forehead of a large, burly guy I was forced to sit by. He had sweated so much, his white button shirt was see-through his foul, decaying stench wrinkled my nostrils with the urge to gag becoming harder to suppress. His whiskers were wild and unkempt. His eyes were so wide they could have burst from his sockets when he stared at me. The best I could do was offer a light-hearted smile. Good afternoon to you, sir. He stared at me for a minute without saying anything. His discolored eyes peered in opposite directions, as if he was staring into infinity. After nothing of note happened between us, I tried to focus on my trip. I held the handle of my briefcase with some hesitation. The town soon became a dot in my eye before sinking into the inky abyss. This was it. It was really it. I turned my attention back to the rye. To think this was the last time I would be seeing this town. Sure, it had one school, a single grocery store and police station, but it had its charms such as its park on the western side of the town. I gazed at the man beside me again, but he was still in his own little world. I tapped the handle a few times as I watched the passengers start to settle down into their seats. Those that could not depend on their hand grips, they stood there shaking slightly any time the bus made a stop. Even then, it felt like the bus was not even close to thinning out, instead becoming more inflated by the minute every now and then. I looked up to see passengers trickling out. I did not know how they could handle being nearly suffocated by the claustrophobic crowds. It reminded me of the droves of people at auditoriums, watching ball games. The air became hotter from the body heat and warm breath radiating from the travelers. During the third stop, the heavy-set gentleman finally left his seat and walked away without saying goodbye. Not that I was intending on saying goodbye anyway, but it would have been thoughtful. A trace of the fat man's putrid stench lingered in the air. I sighed to myself and plopped the briefcase on the seat. My fingers strummed the side as a twinge of doubt arose within me. It will be a couple hours until I reach my destination. Three hours, give or take, the town did not have the best reputation, but my company insisted that I move there. Pardon me, my good sir, would you mind if I sat there? I shook my head clean at the thoughts and looked up. 
there stood a well-dressed man wearing bait, slacks, and an overcoat. He wore a matching top hat on his head and boasted a thin, brown mustache that twirled at the ends. He withdrew his hat and tipped it to me in a friendly gesture. Oh, uh, sure. Be my guest. The gent elegantly found a purchase on the seat and watched me fiddle around with my luggage. After what seemed like an eternity of him staring me down, he reached into his pocket and withdrew a business card. My name is Jacques Skinner, private investigator. He placed the card in my hand, and I flicked it around in my hand to analyze it. Seems legit. What are you trying to solve? Jock smiled at me, revealing a small space between his defrunt teeth. Ever heard of a man named Walter Bean? Walter Bean? The name sounded familiar. I rummaged through my mind for a few seconds. He was the owner of a furniture company, right? Yes, 68-year-old Walter Bean. A CEO and a family man, was the owner of a huge corporation. He was last seen two weeks ago. He apparently was looking to expand his business in the town of Vicksburg. But, well, after he made the business trip, he never came back, which is where I come in. My eyes widened. Vicksburg, that's where I'm going. Jack's eyebrow arched and his interest peaked. Really? That is quite the coincidence. He withdrew a picture of Walter Bean. He was a slightly portly figure with a balding head and spindly mustache Walter wore red. 3XL cotton shirt and cocky pants. He had a half grin on his face as he stood in front of his office. Jock rubbed his chin and probe me further. Why are you going to Vicksburg, if you don't mind me asking? Business trip, they said it was non-negotiable. I'm certain you have heard of the story behind the town, and why it is held with such disdain. I shook my head. I know that the town is worn down and practically a ghost town, but I am not afraid of any ghost stories. He laughed. Okay then. Legend goes that during the 1770s, the town of Vicksburg was once a prosperous place with friendly faces everywhere. People openly shared with each other, and no one was left without. A real utopia, I guess, is the term. I quietly listened to the private investigator as he further lectured me on the town's folklore. That was until there was a certain woman who grew up with nothing. Before marrying into a noble family, she was beloved by her husband. But she had one fear that is universal to everyone regardless of their status, the fear of death. So, she conducted research into the dark practices meeting an occultist who indoctrinated her into the worship of the gods of old. She summoned a demon from the bowels of the earth. To grant her the gift of eternal beauty and life, the demon fulfilled that wish. But it required sacrifices from the living. Sacrifices? Like gods of old. Are you telling the story, my good man? Jacques asked me, somewhat annoyed, but still smiling. Sorry. Just got entrenched in the story. Please go on. One by one, the woman led her family into the mouth of hell starting with the servants, and then her loving husband and therefore kids from there. More and more of the townspeople disappeared in thin air and in their place. Well, let's just say the demons are the residents now. Or well, that's what I have heard. He chuckled to himself and returned the photo of Walter to his pocket. My mind was awash with a surge of thoughts. My, that is quite the story. And you are saying that Walter went to Vicksburg. Him and three more gentlemen as well. 
Either it was because they wanted to expand their businesses, or they were selected almost at random. The previous three had vanished for a few months now. It's peculiar that they would all leave without telling their families. That they should not expect them back any time soon. We talked a bit more about the missing cases, much like Walter. Some of the men missing were the heads of different corporations ranging from furniture to wall. They were all gradually lured to Vicksburg through whatever means and were never heard from again eventually. The bus made a stop and the private investigator got off. He waved goodbye to me, tipping his hat once more. Do keep me updated if you find anything peculiar in Vicksburg. My eyes were glued on the man as he left the bus and continued his way without looking back after he left the premises. The bus resumed its designation.